So now we're going to look at finding area between um, polar curves. So the, the idea is pretty much the same as if you're finding area between rectangular curves. If I add a second polar curve into this picture, maybe, you know, something like this, right, coming around like that. And I'm interested in finding the, the area of this strip between the two curves. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the area bounded by the outer curve, and then I'm going to subtract the area bounded by the inner curve, right? So it's, it's just like for our area between curves and rectangular coordinates, we do, you know, top minus bottom, now it's outer minus inner, it's the exact same idea. So we don't want to go in blindly, we want to know what these two curves look like, okay? So the first one is that same cardioid that we dealt with in the previous example. So at one, two, I want to get the units right this time. We get something like that. Uh, the second curve is again a circle. Uh, this time it's a circle of radius 3, but it's centered at 3 over 2. So that's at 3 over 2, right? Here's 1, 2, 3. So it's a, sorry, it's a circle of radius 1.5, right? Radius 3 over 2, centered at 3 over 2. So it looks like this. Um, All right, I know it looks more oval than a circle, but bear with me. All right, so the, the area that we're looking for then, the area between is going to be the area that's outside the car cardioid but inside the circle. So we're looking for this area here, okay? That's the area that we want to find. And part of finding that area is going to be finding those two points of intersection because we need to know uh, the limits of our integral, right? We need to know alpha and beta. Where does the integral begin and end? Well, we, in order to find those points of intersection, those are going to be when the r values for the two curves are equal. So what we do is we equate the two. 1 plus cos theta is equal to 3 cos theta. So subtract cos theta from both sides. 1 is equal to 2 cos theta divided by 2 cos theta is 1 half. That suggests that theta should be plus or minus pi over 3. Okay, so minus pi over 3 down here plus pi over 3 up there. Okay, Fits more or less with the drawing. I know my drawing, we should have gone out more like this, but yeah, it's all right, yeah? Okay, so what we need to do is we basically are going to do, well, because we're doing like outer minus inner, right? So if you think about if this was like, if that's the outer curve, and then we subtract off the area of the, of the inner one, right? Well, what you get is going to be half the integral from alpha to beta of the outer curve squared minus the inner curve squared, right? So f out squared minus f in squared, that's what we want to integrate here, okay? So in our case, area looks like 1 half integral from minus pi over 3 to pi over 3. So the outer curve is the circle. And again, that's where the picture comes in handy. We can see that the circle is on the outside. Uh, so if we square that, we have 9 cos squared theta. And now we've got to subtract off 1 plus cos theta squared. So we already squared that in the last example, right? That's 1 plus 2 cos theta plus cos squared theta d theta. Um, notice that everything here is even, right? Cosine is an even function. So we, as we're simplifying, one of the things we can do is we can go from 0 to pi over 3 using symmetry. Doubling gets rid of the 1 half. And now let's clean up inside. 9 cos squared minus cos squared. We have 8 cos squared theta minus 2 cos theta minus 1. Okay. Use the power reduction formula here. Integral from 0 to pi over 3. We have 4 plus 4 cos 2 theta. Okay. 
minus 2 cos theta minus 1. And I guess we could always do the 4 minus 1 and simplify that to a 3. So we integrate, right? We get 3 theta, okay? Um, we get 2 sine 2 theta from that one, and we get 2 sine theta from that one. And all that's left is to plug in those limits, 0 to pi over 3. Okay, so lower limit gives me zero all the way through, so I just do the upper limits, three times pi over three is pi. Sine of two pi over three is root three over two times two, so we get plus root three. And sine of pi over three is also root three over two times two minus root three. Ah, so this one actually simplifies nicely. We get an area of pi.